interrupting our today's lecture uh, because in this lecture it is not required but still i will advise you all to please either download nadwins or eclipse id those who have not uh, done, downloaded yet so they have to just uh, Google it NetBeans and the first link which will appear go into the download part and just start downloading. Okay, I'm not basically explaining this particular thing how to download and all because it's quite simple, right? Similarly, uh, you have to download this MySQL Workbench, right? So because uh, the using this MySQL Workbench, we are going to perform our database management system. So basically, this is a database management system. And after completion of this thing, like uh, this uh, in this module, we are going to create some applications, some GUI application, basic, basic application, right? So that we are able to basically access our database and we are able to perform whatever the operation we want to perform and the third thing which is required for our uh, this particular thing is our connector okay so i will tell you about this part while uh, major majority first download these two things first your netbeans id or if you are if you want to download eclipse that's okay too and second one is your my sql workbench okay so no need to worry i will explain what is j connector what is a utility so first of all we will also try to learn it's not like that okay we require j connector why do we require j connector right so all these things we are going to learn in this particular module okay so let's start our today's session so so far we have learned a lot of things okay we have learned means the entire core concept of our java programming language so now you are in a stage where you can basically understand each and every topic like what is class what is object what is a static block what is interface what is abstract class what is inheritance what is polymorphism what is encapsulation what is abstraction what is exception handling right so all these topics now you are in a stage now you can basically build your own application right so not only building your own application but you can also uh, you can also understand that okay what are the function or what are the functionalities we are basically creating whenever we are creating that particular application so let's start our uh, this uh, lecture uh, on this particular java programming language right so till now if somebody will ask you hey uh, what kind of application you are creating it's not like that now till now you are not creating any application you are also writing whenever you are executing program or anything like that so basically over there also you are somehow creating application right so what kind of application you are creating you are creating like command cui application okay that is generally named as character user interface application then what are your character user interface uh, application so till now what you are doing suppose if you are uh, executing any program let's assume i'm just giving you a basic example okay of addition so what you are doing you have created int a int b right whatever the value you are taking and you are just performing the addition of two number so this is what you are doing so if i want to use your application so now using this your application i will be able to perform the addition of two number so how can i uh, execute how can i perform this particular operation i have to during run time i can write the value means whatever the value i will assign to a i will assign to b and automatically i will get the addition okay because c is equals to a plus b so basically right now you are basically inserting what your characters okay so based on this particular functionality we are basically performing and we are creating cui application so if somebody will ask you that okay till now have you learned are you have you created any application so far so you will say yes we have created so suppose if you have created an application of a calculator or any many functionalities you have created somehow in a very small small program okay so from every program we are achieving something now 
So basically what we are doing, we are performing some sort of, you can say that CUI application we are creating. Now, now in Java, what they have done, they have also give us this particular application and uh, that application named as or termed as your GUI application. So Java supports your GUI application too. It means that through Java, we can create a graphical user interface applications, right? So first of all, you should know what do you mean by user interface? Because every time whenever you will find out that you will say, OK, the UI of this particular thing is very good. Then what is user interface? So user interface comprises of everything the user can use to interact with the computer okay so the way basically we are interacting with either our mobile so what we generally say okay the ui of this particular application is very good right so it is basically the means by which the user and computer system can interact using input and your output this devices right right so basically how we are interacting with your uh, you know, with our mobile or our computer okay like that so till now we are creating character user interface. So right now the way basically we are interacting our, uh, you can call it as our computer or laptop basically by using characters. While in the case of our graphical user interface, we are going to use graphics, okay? And graphics include your icons, navigation, bar. So you all of you have already an idea about what graphical user interface application look looks like okay because all of us nowadays are using android application so what are android applications are they are gui application right no but using java if we are just talking about java so we, we if we are if we want to so in this particular module we are going to create window based application or we can say that we are going to create desktop application so if for and for your mobile application, what we generally use, we generally use Android application or iOS application, okay? So similarly for here, what we are going to do, we are going to create a desktop application, right? Like this. So if somebody will ask me like, what is the difference between GUI and CUI? Uh, while I have basically added this particular differences, but most of you, I'm 100% I'm sure because nowadays you have already have an idea about what is CUI and what is GUI. And if I will ask like which one is better, then surely you will say that sir, GUI is better than CUI. Because we always want that our user interface, we should want that our, the efficacy of our user interface should be maximized, okay? So how can we maximize our user interface? efficacy by using GUI, okay? Because CUI is somehow more complicated, okay? Like this. So you can see that, okay, you it will use graphics, it will use uh, commands. See, navigation is easier, you're difficult. Here we can use your keyboard as well as mouse, okay? We can use the concept, but over there, whenever we are working on CUI application, are we using any, uh, you, are we using mouse? No, we are not using our uh, mouse or touchpad, right? So we are only directly using the key, our keyboard only, right? So these are basically the differences between our GUI and CUI. Now, now in Java, using GUI means GUI application. If you want to create GUI application, so there are three ways. Yes, any question? You have, if you don't have any other question, kindly mute your mic. Okay. So in Java, whenever we are creating applications, okay, so there are three ways you can create your application. Either you can use AWT, either you can use Applet, and either you can use Swing, okay? So in this particular module, we are going to cover this, your Swing application. We are going to create Swing application. So after completing this particular module, I'm 100% sure that most of you or all of you will be in a stage to create your own GUI application, right? Like that. So Java has provided three types of packets. So because see, the, all these are what your inbuilt functionalities, right? So like in the case of multi-threading or exception handling, so all these are what? These are the features of our Java programming language. 
So if it is a feature of our Java programming language, then it is mandatory from a Java team to provide us some sort of support. Okay. So how they generally provide us that particular support by providing us libraries, right? So similarly in our Java programming language, we have a library. This is Java exam. Libraries like java.awt, javax.swing, and java.applet. Okay, so if you want to use the functionality of awt, use this package. If you want to use the functionality of applet, use this package. Uh, sorry, this package. And if you want to use the functionality of swing, use this package. Okay, so you have to use these particular package if you want the functionality of your these particular thing like in the case of multi-threading what we are doing so by the way it, it's already there in J import java.lang package so we don't require that particular thing right but for this thing you have to import that particular package if you are not going to import it you will get an error that not defined okay or not able to understand because our compiler will not able to understand that particular class or something like that right like this so in this uh, lecture, we are going to discuss about Swing. So basically, if somebody will ask me like, what is the difference between AWT and your Swing? So Swing, you can call it as an advanced version of your AWT, okay? Uh, AWT is your abstract window toolkit. So using this also, we are able to create our desktop GUI application. We generally create our GUI app, our desktop GUI application, but Swing provides us some additional functionality, some additional features, and the way basically Swing, they have basically implemented, it is very lightweight, okay? So it will take very less execution time like that. So we are going to talk about Swing. So remember that Java Swing is a part of Java Foundation class, says, okay? So these are, are part of your Java Foundation classes that is used to create window-based applications. It is built on the top of your AWT. So somehow we are also using some of the concept of AWT in our Swings too right like your buttons text field because all the, all these th features are already there in awt so you know why do we again re rewrite this particular thing so that is why we are also going to use the concept of awt whenever we are basically importing this particular package so unlike awt java swings provide platform independent and your lightweight component Actually, if I'm going to talk about the technicality between uh, your AWT and your Swing class, so AWT are basically developed in, you can call it as your C or C++ programming language. And whenever we are creating some application using those particular uh, programming language, then you already know that what is a problem. So some of the libraries, I'm not saying that the, this entire thing, but some of the libraries, are using the C or C++ programming language, using the, that, that particular thing, what will happen that we are not able to make this particular application platform independent. Means we cannot, if we are executing on Windows operating system, then we cannot execute that particular uh, application on your uh, some your Mac OS or your Linux based operating system. But in the case of your Swing, what they have done, as I told you that it is a part of your Java foundation classes, means the entire implementation part is under your Java programming language, okay? So that is why, and what is the feature of Java programming language? That is your platform independency. So that is why Java Swing provides us platform independence. So if you are creating an application, right? And if you want to run in some other uh, operating system, so yes, you can run that particular Swing application in any other operating system, right? Like this. So remember that in Java, till now what we are doing, we are importing either java.util, java uh, your lang, java.net, java.sql, so whatever the functionality you want, right? So, but here in this case, remember this 
uh, point because but most of you will not, not able to find out why because you are using drag and drop i will tell you because in java creating swim uh, swing application is quite simple okay it's not that much complex but what i want that you should also understand the actual code okay how they are how we are going to basically create these swing application if we are not using the feature of drag and drop so that if suppose in future we are getting some error so we should have an idea based related to that or based on that right so remember that whenever we are going to use or whenever we want to create any swing application so you have to import a package and the package is not java.swing remember that this is java x.swing so basically x means what they have done means after creating because earlier we have awt and something other libraries but later on when they have added swing and there are many other packages also so what they have done they have made that okay we should now create some extended version of libraries of java libraries okay so that is why what they have done they have created java x.swing so java is a, a different folder and java x is a different folder so both are different folder so in java we have like your lang package right while in java x we have your swing package like this so because you as i have already explained you in the lecture of package that package is nothing but it is a folder right have containing your similar classes or similar kind of your sub packages right so in the case of your java swing api such as your j button j text field so we are going to learn so all these are your classes remember all these are what your classes that are already there in your swing package right so what are the features of your swing so it's lightweight as i told you that it's uh, already developed in the your uh, in the way that it will use this your native operating apis right it is rich control because it provides some extra features like your tree tab print sliders which were not there in, uh, there in the case of your awt it is highly customizable and it is pluggable look and feel okay so these are the advantages of your swing now now if you remember the lecture on your exception handling so what i have told you i have told you like there is a class named as your object class having a sub class named as your throwable class right having two sub classes first one is your exception class and second one is your error class then in exception what we have we have runtime exception your uh, io exception sql exception so all these classes are there so remember this thing we have as i told you that one of the means top topmost uh, class in java programming language is your our object class right so similarly because all these other classes are inheriting this object class out of which this particular class our component class is again inheriting our object class too so all the classes in java programming language either directly or indirectly they are inheriting our topmost level class or we generally call it as your root class known named as your object class right which is uh, basically sub having a sub class named as your component class so in component we have two categories okay two sub classes first one is your container i will tell you what containers are and second one is your j component right so all these are what your j component suppose if you want to write j label j list so remember this is very important all these are your classes these are not variable sometimes students generally get confused and they will uh, say that okay these all these are what our variable no these are our classes right all these are what our classes now so let's uh, go through some of the basic terminology of your gui so uh, i hope that most of you are already have an idea about what do you mean by text field so suppose i have if suppose this is an application so this is what we call it as your text field okay whenever the field where we are writing something so i will also demonstrate to you 
I will also show you, okay, uh, using uh, what I, uh, to, in today's lecture, I'm going to create one basic swing application too, so that you will understand what do you mean by text field. So this is your pass, password field. So I hope that all of you are already have an idea about all these terminologies, like these are no, named as what your radio button, these are our checkbox, right? These are our labels. So whatever the thing we are writing now over there, remember that this is label. Sometimes the student have no idea about labels. They have an idea about text field. So suppose if somebody will ask me what this username is, username is label. Label means these are the field which we cannot change. Okay, means only a programmer can change, but a user cannot change. Like suppose if I'm going to give you some form, so you can only make changes in this particular text field. You can write, you can update whatever the thing you want to write, but you cannot change this username. So all these are named or termed as our label. Similarly, we have choices, we have this text area, text box and text area, the different text field and text area is, means that in text area we have means, uh, you can say that the, the area, is very high means you can write multiple lines over there but here you cannot write multiple area means lines over there okay and these are known as your buttons okay like that and this are this is your menu title bar this is your title bar this is your mind menu item something like that now now whenever we are creating your swing application two things are very important first one is our container and second one is your J component. So these te uh, technical word you should also know, okay? You should have an idea about this thing. So if somebody will ask me, suppose if I have created this particular application, this is what my GUI application. So I have created this application, let's assume using my, uh, this NetBeans ID, okay? I have created uh, this particular app application, GUI application. So if somebody will ask me, can I, can you tell me about which one is container? Then remember the outer box, okay? This particular thing we generally call, sometimes we got dialogue box or all these things where we are basically in, uh, having the box which contains, you can call it as the box which contains your components, your J components are termed as your container. Container means which will contain your and all your components, right? So this terminology you should use. So in this lecture, we are going to cover all these things. Okay, so uh, most of you are already have an idea about all these things. They are already aware because nowadays we are already using all these things. We are using several other applications. So you already have an idea about, okay, what do you mean by labels? What do you mean by your frame? What do you mean by buttons? Something like that. Now, now what I, I right now, first of all, I can also uh, means uh, I can directly show you my, my net means and I can directly show you that we can perform drag and drop operation. But right now I don't want that. Why I don't want that particular thing? Because I just want to show you that let's assume you, you just want to create an application. Okay, You want to create an application without drag and drop. How can you create an application so that I want that you should have an idea about, okay, how we are basically creating an application. Otherwise, we will never uh, focus upon this particular source code if we are using our drag and drop feature, right, like this. So some, if suppose, if I want to create an application, if I want to create a GUI application, so how can I create? Remember that, first of all, we must have a Java X dot swing package. Remember this point. This is very important. So whenever you are using now, whenever you are creating Swing application directly, I can even demonstrate you over here. Let me open. Where is my NetBeans? Yeah. So if I will directly demonstrate it you here, let me open. Yeah, so here you can see directly what we can see. We are directly performing drag and drop operation, even though I will tell you, okay, how to create an application, GUI application. I'm just telling you, 
in java is using any id if you are using intel ij or you are using uh, this netbeans or your eclipse you can directly perform drag and drop operation but in if you will go to the source part then you will find okay so actually in your netbeans so what drawback i find out in the case of your netbeans ide is that we are not able to see this particular functionality so our netbeans will hide us okay all these methods all these variables it will just show us only the thing only that particular thing which is very useful for us but it will hide other things right it will hide other things but in the case of your eclipse ide if you are using eclipse ide then you will be able to see this entire particular thing right now now first of all what i want to do i want to create this particular frame i want to create this particular frame so how can i create this particular frame if i am directly writing this entire thing via code so i am going to use this jframe class so there is a class named as jframe class so you already know that how to create a class so this is how basically you can create a object of this particular class so once you will execute this particular thing now then what will happen it will create a jframe having this particular so we are passing this message uh, so this is a constructor now you are in a state that you understand that okay this is a constructor calling okay and we are passing an argumented constructor and here it will display swing app example then this here we have these methods like your set wise set visible if we are not going to make it set visible as true na then what will happen we are not able to see this particular thing so whenever we are executing our anything so automatically what our the what our uh, this particular thing will do our id will do it will make our set visible as true now this thing is very important right always remember this thing is very important now the question that comes into your mind is sir why this thing is very important set visible is equal to true suppose if you want to basically develop some application and uh, suppose you are making some changes in that particular application right and you want that that particular frame is, should not visible to my end user okay so in that particular scenario what you will do you will make this jf set visible as false so once you will complete the entire thing once you are 100% sure that okay everything is working fine then what you will do then in that particular scenario you will make this jf dot set visible as what your true right like this so similarly these are what our set size so what size you want to uh, this thing and here j frame exit on close so these are the functionality if i want to use on this particular button okay so automatically we will get the all these buttons okay so it's not like that we have to create these things like your close maximize minimize okay button so this is what we have if you want to create an application so remember we are basically creating this particular frame now let's assume if i want to create an application in order to perform the addition of two number okay what i want i want to perform addition of two numbers so remember this thing what i have told you so till now you already have an idea about okay this is what we have named as what our j frame right now what we are doing all these are what my labels so if somebody will ask me how many labels are there for this particular case i am using only three labels how many text boxes i am using two text field box i am using so one class named which we are using over there is what our j label class okay so all these classes are by default available right so if you want to use so i have used i have created a, you can say the reference variable of j j label class your j text field class your j button class like that okay and i am performing so in my j label class what i am doing i am basically for, uh, basically printing i want to show this particular message so i am displaying this particular message and if you want to perform some sort of uh, you can say that some sort of you can say uh, application so somehow you can perform whatever the application you want to perform so you can add or create your own method too right so you can see directly that here we are putting all these dimensions right so all these are what my dimensions 
like my x axis y axis my length and your width or you can call it as your height okay like what will be the height of this particular thing so remember that whenever we are creating swing application na so coordinate will start from here so this coordinate will always be what 0 0 So if I am writing 50 comma 50, so it will be something like here. And if I am writing 50 comma 80, right? So x comma y, so something like that. So you will uh, automatically you will get to know, okay, about the coordinate. But remember this point that your 0 comma 0 coordinate will start from this point, not this point. Okay, sometimes the student generally get confused and they will say that okay, we our coordinate will start from this point. No, our coordinate will start from this point. this particular so similarly what you can do you can create your button application all these things you can do so it's better because right now i just want to show you okay that is why i just want to show you that how basically we are creating an object otherwise if you are using net beans then i am 100% sure that you will never understand that okay how basically swing application are executing means you via code okay so now let's assume and let's execute and let's create one application using swing application so using uh, an net beans okay so once you will basically uh, download okay this your net beans ide so first of all what you have to do you have to create a project okay and after going through this thing just go to java with add so go to java application go to next okay so in some of your whenever once you will uh, means for your first time if you are basically going for or creating your project then it will take some time to load some of your libraries okay it will check like is there any libraries that are missing or not if there are any libraries which are missing then it will take some time okay you will not directly see this particular page once you will it will execute it will install those your libraries then what you will do you can again perform you can also restart or by the way it is not required but it's better to again restart your net beans and again once you will restart it then you will find out okay then you will find out this particular dialog box okay related to your new java application now you will click on this your finish page so once you will click on this page then this is what my this particular package named as what we call it as your java application file okay after that what you have to do because right now just click here right click over there okay so after click if you are going to click right click on this particular thing then you what you will do you will see go through this new and you will find out that what do you want do you want to create some class do you want to create some package do you want to create some interface do you want to create some j panel form entity class entity classes for database because see this is an ide okay so it's not like that you can only perform java related uh, part only you can also create entity relationship or entity classes from databases so there are many other features that this particular net beans basically provided us, uh, provided us right even though we are using it only for java developers so if you will go or uh, for ent enterprise edition or like that or millennial uh, edition then you will find many other features related to your java this particular ide now whenever you want to create your swing application so again i am repeating revising it first of all just click on this folder or you can go directly from new project first of all you have to create your project once you have created a project then on that particular project press right click and then go through new and in then new what you will do you will directly go through and you will click on j frame form okay once you will click over there then you can give whatever the name class name you want to give suppose uh, sample gui i want to give sample gui right like this and i will click on this particular finish button so once i will click on this particular finish button then what will happen see you will see this is this is nothing but this is a palette okay this is what this is a palette having 
your entire functionality is entire con your you can call it as your container c these are what our containers and these are what your controls or what we call it as sometimes we call it as your components remember and remember this thing always please don't get confused with that all these are what your classes so whenever we are talking about classes so they might have a lot of methods too right so see right now i am not create i have not created anything yet okay so this is what we call it as our design window so in design window what we can do we can directly perform any drag and drop operation which i will show you no issue at all and second one is what we call it as our source window because everything we can, we here we can perform put we can directly perform drag and drop operation but suppose if i want to execute some method if i want to perform some operation can i directly perform it from here no i cannot perform it here i am just for using this graphical interface but if you want to perform or if you want to achieve some functionalities then remember this thing you have to write a code okay so don't say okay why we have uh, gone through this entire java programming language that if we are able to create an application no you cannot directly create an application because at the end of the day you have to write some of the things you have to add some features over there right now now after this thing you will see that we have a design window we have a source so when you will click on source view so we have two views so even though we have history view just leave about this particular view go for design view so automatically you will get design view but i am interested in my source view so in source view what you what we can see here so this is the only disadvantage of what we call it as in your net beans okay so if you will see in your eclipse na so you will see a lot of things you will see a lot of methods but here what they will do because see it depends upon how they have implemented this particular id so they are basically hiding those things but in reality uh it is because those things are not at all required okay that is why they are hiding those things otherwise why they should hide okay actually in reality it is not required but why i want that uh, they should uh, uh, i just want to show you this particular thing so that you will have an idea okay we are creating a class something like that okay now now in this thing what you what we can see so far is related to that we have created a class right we have created a class remember see i have told you na there are uh, ways the ways uh, we can basically inherit or we can use the your packages right if you are uh, if you will revise the concept that we can use your package even using fully qualified name what do you mean by fully qualified name like here so somehow if you will see that we are using those concepts what do you mean by fully qualified name you are writing the entire thing you are not importing a package import java x dot swing but what you are doing you are writing java x dot swing dot jframe so yes it is valid in java programming language right like this so you know that this is what we have we have this particular constructor right then we have pub. so remember we must have a public static void when method here you can see see we are using this particular j dot java dot awt awt is what java dot awt is a package over there we are going for this event queue is a class over there this is a method okay and through this we are performing what whatever the task we are performing related to runnable and or something like that okay and remember this thing we have made this particular visible as what you are true right so till now if you will check it out we don't have any other thing now now again let's get back to our design view see this is what we have named as your design view so once you will click on this particular design view then what you will see you will see a lot of containers as well as you will see a lot of your swing controls right now now if i want to add some container named as your pen okay so you can so suppose if i want to use this so see what i am what i have to do i have to directly click on this particular container and i will directly put it here right and then what i will do whatever the operation i want to do i can enlarge it this particular thing now again let's get back to this particular our source code 
and let's check whether is there anything which has been changed so far yes now we have this particular line of code now in this particular line of code what we have done we have created this particular panel and remember this thing because this is very important that it this is a reference variable okay named as j panel 1 so if i want to perform some method now on this particular uh, you can call it as on this particular panel then i have to write it down j panel dot whatever the method i want to perform right either you want to perform inbuilt method or we want to create our own method it's up to us right like that now now after after creating this particular panel if you want to set some sort of color so you can see on the bottom that we can set whatever the color we want to set so you can click over there so see we have a lot of means uh, you can say that options over there so let's assume i will pick this particular color and i am going to click okay right like this so if you will check it out over there you will not find any changes because all these things are occurring inside this j panel 1 because all these things uh, you are performing drag and drop so when whatever the operation you are performing now using your drag and drop so that particular method or that particular thing we are not able to see over there but actually in reality what will happen uh, we will get these for this particular thing like that as i have given you no one example like this it will create some class it will create set size because we are also setting the size also no so it will set the size something like that but here we are not setting anything so all the things or set set color is again a method okay but here we are not using that particular functionality now now after that if you want to add some sort of your labels so how can you add labels just click on this particular label and just write it down here if you want to add some you can call it as your uh, text so th these are your labels remember what do you mean by label suppose our user name okay so means a programmer means only a programmer can change this particular label but a user cannot change it okay we how in which field we generally work upon or work on we generally work on our text field so this is a text field where we generally work on okay so if you will find it out till now let's go back to the source code then you will find out okay, sorry yeah so if you will check it out here then what you what you what we can see now we can see see j label 1 j panel 1 why i am focusing upon these two things why i am focusing upon 121 all these statements because i will tell you why one example that why these things are very important because if you want to write some sort of code okay and if you want to perform some sort of operation on these particular thing that remember then you should have an idea about these things like what is your j label one what which one is your j text field something like that right like this so after that what you can do you can use either checkbox or whatever radio box so see all these are there okay i'm not going uh, in the discuss so in one application in one of your program i will demonstrate i will demonstrate you each and everything remember i will demonstrate you each and everything so right now i am just giving you an overview about this particular thing so after this lecture um, i will uh, it's it's better that all of you should download either eclipse or your netbeans and just try to create and build application you can test it out all these features okay so you will find all these features whatever the font you color you want so these see there are many methods many features that are there okay what do you want it's up to you right like this similarly here if you will click over there see remember we have over there this particular you will find out one more window something like that and if you will click on j frame then you will get what what kind of the preview design you want what event you want so i am i am going to discuss about event handling uh, after some time then what kind of layout you want right now we are using three design if you want grid layout right means everything should be in a form of matrices then what it will do it will basically perform grid kind of operation so what kind of palette you want it's up to you right so all these things you can perform in this particular using your swing application 
now what i want to show you uh, because i have created one already one application this card okay so in this application let me check whether i have created this particular application or not. yeah so see in this application what i have done i have created created one application remember what i have done i have created one application and using this application what i am doing now if some user will give means enter some number in the first text field either in the second text field so automatically that user will get the result if we are going to click on this particular answer button so let's get back to your source code so this is a very simple application okay so what i have done i have directly performed drag and drop operation no issue at all but what i want is that if i am going to click on this particular answer button now so it this text field 3 what it will do whatever the numbers we have now in our text field 1 as well as in text field 2 text field 2 it will add up on those particular these two numbers so how can i basically perform this operation remember whenever i will perform this particular operation what you do you just perform direct double click in your design window just press double click on this your answer button so once i will click on this answer button na then what will happen i will directly go back to this particular thing and this particular thing is nothing but your action listener class now the question that comes into your mind is sir what do you mean by action listener or action event class or action event actually what action event means is that whenever you are performing some action action like whenever you are pressing double click or single click then what will happen automatically this particular method will invoke and whatever the operation whatever the statement you want to execute over there now so it will execute the, those particular basically or uh, statement it will execute so in this statement what i am doing is i want to perform addition of two number means whatever the number you are writing in your text field 1 as well as in text field 2 text field 3 will add up the numbers of your text field 1 and your text field 2 so how it can be done so see what i have done now you are using the concept of your your programmable logic you are using okay programming logic so now i have created three variables int a comma b comma c now after that what i am doing is i am basically assigning this particular number even though if you want to use java.util package you can use that particular thing too okay but it's better to use this integer.parse int over there so that it will parse whatever the integer number we are getting but if you want to use uh, the functionality of scanner class so yeah you can also perform it, that particular thing right this integer is remember that this is what we call it as your class this is not your data type this is a integer class right so class is having what some methods so automatically we have a method named as your parse int method right so in this method remember what we are doing we are parsing something so what do what we want to parse so whatever the j text field one we have now remember that yes any question okay so whatever j text field one we have remember see here we are creating now all these things right so j text field is what my first one is j text field one j text field two j text field so that is why you should have an idea about okay which one will have which reference variable okay so i am using this reference variable so in this reference variable whatever the get text so get text is a method okay so whatever the thing we are getting it now from this particular your text box so that is why sorry in this particular scenario yeah we have to use this your parse int because here we are using this get text method okay so in the, this particular get text method we are getting some sort of your string okay so your number will always come in the form of your string then automatically this method will do what it will convert that particular string number into your integer number right like this is what we are doing similarly in your text field 
this is my text field 2 i am performing the same operation now i am performing c is equals to a plus b now after performing c equals to a plus b what i want i want that if i am going to click on this particular button first of all i will add these two numbers and then what whatever the thing that are there okay over there then automatically it will perform the addition of these two fields okay so that is why c is equals to a plus b because a contains text field uh, j text field one number b contains text field two number and c is equals to a plus b so once we are going to perform j text we see here we are using these methods so these two methods are very important okay you should remember these two methods get means you want to fetch something set means you want to basically add or uh, some updates or you want to add some data on that particular field okay so if you want to use some uh, update or add some information on that particular field so you have to use set text field and after that what i am doing i am basically adding this particular c variable over there now if i am going to execute this application then what will happen so let's execute this application see what i have to do i am going to write 50 67 I am going to write 23 and see if I will click on this answer button. Remember, if I will click on this answer button, then I will get the output. I will get the output. Now, one question I think if someone has noticed this particular thing, then someone will ask me, sir, here you are getting J level 3, but over there you have made a change as an addition over there. So the one thing which you should always remember that in Java, in NAD means what they generally do, they all uh, so they generally create binary files. Okay. So once you will compile some code now, and next time when you will make some changes, so sometimes you will find out that those changes were, are, we are not able to reflect those particular changes. So how to reflect back those particular changes? I'm telling you because sometimes you might get an error based on that too. So remember, click on this particular thing and click on this, this particular package. Click on this, whatever the package I'm using. I'm using J, uh, Java application three folder, okay? I will right click over then and I will click on clean and build. Means now whatever the application I, now I'm going to execute now, I will execute from the scratch means now no I don't have any binary files so once I will build this particular thing so it will take some time in order to build okay right now I don't know why it's taking so much time but otherwise it's no it will not take that much amount of time so till then time uh, it is basically executing this thing let's go back to this particular application right what we are doing we are creating these applications right so these all these things i have basically posted in this particular ppt so i will share this particular ppt on lms so that you can use this thing as a manual okay and then later on we are going to discuss about other methods it's better i should go for hands-on for this particular case because we have multiple several other things too remember like this so just go through this ppt but still i am going to cover this some of the portion of this particular ppt in upcoming lecture and we are going to create our own application right like this so let's check it out yeah now see after performing this per operation now you can see i can i have this thing is now updated right like this now the one more thing which i just want to mention and after that i am going to end this particular lecture is how to create a jar file right because it's not like that uh, your user will have a netbeans eclipse or every time or netbeans or eclipse or anything like that suppose your user is having only jvm that is your java virtual machine okay or JRE. So how you are going to basically execute on how you make that, okay, those users should also use your basically that particular application. Then you have to make your application in your in the form of your jar file. So that if you, if once you will create that particular jar file, so that 
user can directly access. Like in our Android application, we are not basically executing our every time on our Android Studio. Android Studio is not required, okay? We just require that particular application because we already have that runtime in general in our uh, this particular mobile phone. Similarly, in the case of your operating system also, we have that runtime application, but what we want, we want only application. We don't want this particular entire file. So for this particular case, what you will do, you will directly click on this particular thing, right? So make a right click over there, go to your properties. Once you will go to your properties, then you will find all these options. Then after that, what you will do, click on this run button. Okay. Once you will click on this run button, then what you will do? You will find out that what kind of runtime uh, application. Let me check where we have this particular thing. Mm. Oh, it's not there. Let me check. Huh? Just wait. Okay, no issue in the next lecture. I will tell you about that particular thing. Okay, we are running out of time. So no issue that particular thing I am going to cover in our next lecture or let me just wait. Huh? I will go to the property then. Just wait. I will go into your project properties. I'm sorry, packaging. We have to go to packaging not uh, your run okay i get confused so once you will click on this packaging partner see go to i am again re revising this thing well, go to right click go to this properties then after that what you do go to packaging because we want to package this particular thing and whatever the uh, jar file you want to create so now just click on this particular thing just press okay now what i have done i have created that particular jar file Okay, so now I have created this particular jar file. So if I will search it out that particular jar file, so you can find it out. So I have already created one jar file. So this jar file looks like this. Okay, so having this cup of uh, this particular coffee representing logo representing this your Java programming language and you can directly perform this particular operation. Now in the next lecture, I will give you an overview about the Java uh, means databases. And then later on, we are going to perform Java database connection. But before starting our next lecture in your uh, means on your Thursday, there will be a quiz number three. Remember, there will be a quiz number three. The syllabus will be your exception handling and your multi thread. OK, so we, you will get a mail related Sir, to that. Of questions in that quiz and time. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Sir, time provided and number of questions. So number of questions you will get uh, 10 minutes. Oh, sorry, 10 questions you will get and we will this time we will provide you 18 or 19 minutes. Okay, like, like last time we have provided you only 15 minutes. So this time we will provide you more time like 18 yes. or 19 minutes. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Then thank you. Also in the next lecture we are going to discuss about your database connectivity and then we are going to create our build our own application. Okay then. Thank you all. Okay, thank you sir.